today for this video we're going to have the th percent yield theoretical yield and actual yield so before that let us have the formula on how to compute a percent yield so on a percent yield we have here percent yield is equals to actual yield divided by theoretical yield so but before we go to our tutorial of computation, let us analyze first what is the purpose or how what is the importance of this percent yield. So this percent yield is actually it is very important in the pharmaceutical production. So it is the one process or one step na kailangan ma malaman nila because this uh, it takes place on how to uh, on how do a drug or yung gamot is do better kung effective ba yung bagamot or more efficient siya by means of identifying its percentage on its having the actual and theoretical yield. So, ano po ba yung actual and theoretical? Theoretical is the maximum amount. It is the maximum amount that uh, the pro product can be formed or could be formed. So, ito yung pinaka-maximum na pwede niyang ma-form. While the actual yield from the word actual, so it is the amount of product that is actually formed when the reaction is carried on the laboratory. Okay? So, ito yung theoretical maximum. Si actual yung pinaka uh, talagang nakuha sa experiment sa laboratory. So, just like an example kapag sa food. For example, meron tayong six, bur uh, six buns of uh, tinapay. Then, I have also six burger patties. So, doon sa ingredients na yun, I could form six burgers or hamburger. Tama ba? Oh, so, from that, pwede ko nang lutuin, ganyan, ganyan. But when I cook the bur the potties and form it in, uh, and attach it to the burgers, then merong mga changes like hindi nasunog yung isang patties, naiwanan sa uh, kawale, o kaya yung iba is nalaglag, syempre madumi na. So, at the end of my cooking, ang na-prepare ko lang is 5 hamburgers lang. And the other one, kasi yung patty ay nasunog, so hindi na siya ma-form as one hamburger kasi wala yung patty. So that is the actual. So yun yung actual na nangyari. Although na 6 yung burger patties and 6 yung buns natin, pero dahil nagkaroon ng mga uh, different factors, nabawasan siya. Same with percent yield. So dito sa actual yield, May mga, pra, uh, may mga instances that in an experiment or in a laboratory, there are uh, naiiwan dun sa apparatus o kaya tatatapon, di natin inaasahan. So, that makes the actual yield is much lesser than the theoretical yield. yield sorry. So, yun yung pagkakaiba nila. Kaya natin i-compute yung percent yield, yung, yung percentage ba ng pagkakagawa ng gamot or yung reaction na yun is closely sa 100%, or although wala tayong 100% talaga sa reaction na to. Kasi, syempre, hindi pa rin maiiwasan yung may naiwan na chemical sa mga labor, labor, laboratory apparatus, or yung iba is natatapon. Okay? So, let us go with the computation process. So, let's have the problem here. So, it is written also in your module. So, we have here 40 grams of potassium chlorate is heated until completely decomposes. What is the theoretical yield of oxygen gas? The experiment is performed and the oxygen gas is collected and its mass is found to be 14.9 grams and what is the percent, percent yield of composition? Uh, so, what is the percent yield for the reaction? So, we have here the problem. So, written here, I also given the chemical equation of the problem. So, we have here 2 potassium chlorate yields to 2 potassium chloride uh, reacts with 3 molecules of oxygen gas. Okay, so we have here the chemical equation. But before that, if you have this kind of equation, so lagi gagawin nyo po, lagi nyo pong tatandaan, the first thing na gagawin po is to check if the equation is balanced. 
for us to know if the reaction of their uh, the reaction be if there will be reaction or not kasi pag hindi balance so automatically hindi rin magiging maganda yung reaction and the output of our computation same with kunwari yung pagluluto nyo di ba sa cooking may mga ingredients tayo hindi dapat uh, mas uh, di ba may sinasabing ito one glass of water lang then Uh, one teaspoon of toyo, di ba? May ganun tayong sinusunod. Kasi pag hindi natin sinunod yun, what will happen to our co- uh, yung product ng cook- ng luto natin? So, it's either masyadong maalat kung napasobra ng asin or ng toyo. And yung iba is matabang naman pag sobra ng water. And that how applies it in a chemical equation. So, first is check natin if balance. So, two potassium, parehas. Two chlorine, Tama? Then, 6 uh, oxygen, 6 oxygen. Okay. So, pag hindi pa rin kayo get sa balancing equation, balik po kayo dun sa panonood ng balancing equation natin. Okay? Nandito lang sa ating, uh, nandito lang, scan nyo lang po yung mga videos natin. So, let's go back with the problem. So, I have here prepared actually the computation itself. Ayan na po. Okay, so iisa-isahin po natin para ma-identify. So, first po is identify or uh, please pakisulat po nyo yung given na meron doon sa problem natin where we have 40 grams of potassium chlorate and we need to identify, sabi niya kasi ito, what is the theoretical yield of oxygen gas. So, it means si oxygen gas yung hinahanap natin. Then, uh, for this, binigay na rin may binigay siyang isang given na meron daw siyang na-collect na mass doon sa experiment niya na na-perform, which is the 14.9 grams. So, from the word experiment perform, so it represents for the actual yield. So, automatically nabigay na si actual yield, which, which is 14.9 grams of oxygen gas. Now, we are finding, we need to find for the theoretical yield muna bago natin mahanap si percent yield kasi nga, uh, try to remember ano ba yung formula ni percent yield percent yield is uh, equals to actual yield divided by the theoretical yield so mahihirapan tayong hanapin Okay, so from this, we have the actual yield. Now, we're going to find for the percent yield. But before we go for the percent yield, let us go with theoretical yield na oxygen gas. So, I have written here first the given, which is the 40 grams of potassium chlorate. Now, on the first part ng ating conversion, dahil nasa gram siya, we need to convert grams papunta kay mass. So, when you try to remember our f- previous lesson, which is the conversion, nandito rin, nandito rin sa video natin kung naguguluhan ta- kayo, meron tayong grams to mole, mole to molecules, and on how to compute it. So, binigay ko na po sa inyo kung paano yung pag-compute niya. Okay? So, from this, makikita nyo, uh, una natin gagawin dahil i-convert natin si grams papunta kay mole. So, grams papunta kay mole, meron tayo, ang gagawin po natin is divide. Saan po natin siya i-divide? Its molecular mass. Now, ano po ba ang, mole- ano ang molecular mass ang hahanapin natin? Siyempre, yung given compound. Ano ba yung given compound natin? Potassium chlorate. So, when I already computed for the potassium chlorate, molecular mass, kukunin lang, and we will have a molecular mass of 122.50 grams per mole. So, ito yun. So, nakuha ko, nakuha ko to sa periodic table. Up to 2 decimal lang kinuha ko. Kasi may ibang periodic table na naiiba sila sa kanilang output o yung kanilang nakalagay. Depende po. So, yan. From this, first, convert muna natin from grams to mole ng potassium chlorate. So, sa baba, kasi divide, uh, division ang gagawin natin or magdi-divide tayo. 40 grams divided by 122.55 grams of potassium chlorate. So, ang mangyayari po, maka-cancel out na natin si potassium chlorate. Cancel out na. At si grams ay magiging cancel out na rin. Ang magiging ay moles na lang po. From this, moles na siya ng potassium chlorate. Now, hindi naman natin hinahanap yung mole ng potassium chlorate. Ang hinahanap natin is yung oxygen gas. So, we need to identify its uh, react 
uh, paano natin makukuha yung theoretical yield ni oxygen gas. So, by just looking at uh, its balance equation, so, itong next na uh, gagawin po natin is sa baba ilalagay natin yung compound na given, which is the potassium chlorate. Then, sa taas ilalagay natin yung compound na gusto nating makuha o yung hinahanap natin which is yung hinahanap so we have oxygen gas followed by please pakisulat yung coefficients na okay so after that so titina natin kung susulat natin yung coefficient ng mga compound na meron tayo doon sa balance equation kaya nga sinabi ko kanina much mas maganda o mas importante na ma-identify talaga natin na balance yung equation natin kasi pag mali O, mali mali na agad yung computation natin so after that nakuha na natin 2 potassium chlorate and 3 from oxygen gas so from 122 divide dito multiply natin sa 3 divided by 2 then next na conversion natin is dahil mole po yung andito at ang hinahanap po natin ay percentage yield at ang given ay grams ibabalik po natin siya sa grams para magbal uh, makuha natin yung actual, parehas yung unit ng actual natin, tsaka ng theoretical yield natin, which is grams. So, i-convert natin si oxygen gas na sagot dito from mole to grams. So, pag convert ulit natin from mole to grams, mole to grams, i-multiply natin to its molecular mass. So, anong molecular mass? Siyempre, si oxygen gas na. Dahil dito kasi cancel out na si potassium chlorate. So, oxygen gas na tayo. Pagkakuha natin, ito yung makukuha nating uh, sagot. Sa calculator nyo po, ganito po yung itatype nyo para makakuha nyo rin po. Sabayan nyo po, 40 grams divided by 122.55 ng potassium chlorate. Then multiply to 3 divided to 2 then multiply to 32 so ang kinuha ko po is up to 2 decimal point so we have 15.66 grams of oxygen gas which is the theoretical yield ng problem natin now next pwede na tayong mag proceed sa actual yield so ah sorry sa percent yield so ang percent yield natin is percent is equals to actual yield divided by theoretical yield si theoretical yield ay given na from the problem we have 14.9 grams from its experiment performed yun si oxygen gas ngayon si theoretical yield naman yung nakuha natin 15.66 grams so 14.9 divided by 15.66 6 times 100 now we will come up with a percentage of 95.15% of this reaction. So meaning itong react itong problem na to, itong experiment na nagawa niya is nagkaroon ng 95.15% na complete rate ng natapos niyang uh, equi uh ng kanang experiment. And that is the percent yield. So that is on that is on how to compute the our first problem. Okay? So let us uh have the next problem. Sige. Next po tayo ulit. Para hindi tayo Yan, ayan, sorry. May mga ink ink na nasulatan na. Okay, let's have this one. So the second problem identifies sabi niya dito how many grams of hydrofluoric acid, which is SHF, are required to react completely with 23.68 grams of calcium hydroxide in the following reaction? So, from this, kailangan natin syempre ng chemical equation. Ang chemical equation natin is this one. We have calcium hydroxide reacts with hydrofluoric acid yun yung given natin and their product is calcium fluoride reacts with H2O or water so from this ang unang pinahapahanap niya is yung uh, kung how many grams daw ba yung makukuha natin if nagkaroon ng reaction within hydrofluoric acid and calcium hydroxide so itong dalawa okay so, hanapin muna natin yung reaction or yung mag, uh, katulad ng ginawa natin sa umpisa. So, first, kunin natin si given. Okay. So, from this, 
Ito yung ating chemical equation. So, cal calcium hydroxide, ito siya. Then, hydrofluoric acid, ito. Then, we will have the product of calcium fluoride and water. So, if uh, kasama sa lesson natin yung predicting products, ma-identify nyo paano ma-predict yung products by having the uh, different types of chemical reaction. Ito yung single, double displacement, combination, uh, combustion, uh, combustion, and ano ba yung isa? Uh, yung una, combination. Okay? So, from this, so, so much for that. From this, unahin muna natin is yung first rule ko na sinasabi ko sa inyo is to identify or balance first the equation. So, pag binalance na natin yan, so, calcium hydroxide, hydrofluoric acid, H2O, o dito, lagyan natin ng tuto para mabalance itong dalawa. And the other one is the coefficient of 1. Coefficient of 1. Now, now, that makes the equation balance. Opo, opo. So, from this, nabalance na natin sa equation, compute na natin, go with our computation. Okay, so let's go with the computation. So, I have written first the given. So, we have 23.68 grams of calcium hydroxide. So, we need to have the conversion papunta. Malaman natin kung ilan yung required na uh, kailangan para makapag-react siya with hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so I have written first the given. We have 23.68 grams of calcium hydroxide to hydrofluoric acid. For us to know ilan yung kailangan natin na... Uh, uh, kailangan natin para mag-react siya sa hydrofluoric acid. So, let us go first to compute. Iwan natin si balance formula, ha? So, from this, meron na tayong given calcium, uh, calcium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. So, una natin gagawin is first, dahil i-convert muna natin siya si grams papunta kay mole. Bakit? Nakagram, nakagrams po siya eh. So, kailangan natin siyang i-convert. So, isipin, uh, yung gagamitin natin is conversion process ulit. Katulad ng sinabi ko, ito po. Grams to mole pa rin tayo. So, grams to mole, division. So, kunin natin ang molecular mass ni calcium hydroxide. So, nung kinuha natin yung molecular mass, ito na, nakumpute ko na siya. So, calcium hydroxide, so meron tayong 74.10 grams per mole ni calcium hydroxide. So, i-compute na natin. So, first, write the given, 23.68 grams ni calcium hydroxide. So, convert. So, ko-convert natin dahil division nasa baba yung molecular mass na 74.10 grams ng calcium hydroxide. At sa taas ng in every one mole, meron tayong 74.10. Now, after that, na-convert na natin siya papunta kay... Na-convert na natin siya papunta sa mole. Now, ang next na ko-convert natin katulad ng ginawa natin is from calcium hydroxide papunta sa target uh, compound natin which is ang target compound natin is hydrofluoric acid so ang nasa baba natin is yung compound na kailangan nating ma-cancel out which is calcium hydroxide at sa taas ang ilalagay natin is yung kailangan nating uh, compound which is hydrofluoric acid. Now, susunod, isusulat natin yung coefficient na present sa, ano nila, sa balance equation. Si calcium hydroxide ay 1, so 1, at si hydrofluoric acid ay 2. Now, na-convert na natin. Anong next? May next pang conversion tayo? Yes. Kasi dito, nasa mole pa siya. So, katulad ng isa, i-convert iko naman natin from mole to grams naman. So, from mole to grams, mole to grams, mumultiply natin. Ano naman yung imumultiply natin? Siyempre, yung uh, molecular mass ni calcium fluoride at ang molecular mass ni calcium, uh, sorry, ni hydrofluoric acid is 20.01 grams of hydrofluoric acid. So, dahil multiply sa taas si molecular mass ni hydrofluoric acid, 20.01 ni hydrofluoric acid, sorry, in every one mole. Now, total na ba tayo? Yes, kasi dito, calcium to, uh, grams to mole, then kay calcium hydro, uh, hydroxide papunta hydrofluoric acid na grams, 
ay na mole, sorry, and then hydrofluoric acid na mole papuntang grams. So, pag i-compute natin sa calculator, 23.68 divided by 74.10 multiply by 2 kasi parang wala lang din naman si calcium hydroxide, cancel out si calcium hydroxide, dito calcium si grams, then multiply by 2, and multiply by 20.01 grams of hydrofluoric acid, then we will have the answer of 12.79 grams of hydrofluoric acid. So from now, meron na tayong 12.79 hydro of hydrofluoric acid. So meron na tayong theoretical yield. Now, may next follow-up question sa problem. So, based on the uh, psychometry of this problem, the theoretical yield for this problem is 12.79 grams of hydrofluoric acid, which is tama, yun nakuha natin. But, when this experiment was conducted, an actual yield of only 10.41 grams of hydrofluoric acid was collected. Now, the question is, what is the percent yield for the reaction? So, ngayon, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, si actual yield lagi ay much lesser kaysa kay theoretical yield. Now, hinahanap si percent yield. Uh, since uh, given na ang theoretical yield natin at ito yung actual yield, pwede, natin pwede na natin i-compute for the percent yield. So, si percent yield is actual yield actual yield divided by theoretical yield. And that is our percent, uh, percent yield. Now, ano yung actual yield natin based from the problem? So, sabi niya, ang nakuha daw niya sa experiment ay 10.41 grams of hydrofluoric acid. So, 10.41 grams of hydrofluoric acid divided to, ang theoretical yield natin is 12.79 uh, grams of hydrofluoric acid. Now, if we divide it, then times 100 to be, uh, para maging percent siya, percentage yield. Now, ang magiging sagot ay 81.39% and this is our percent yield for this reaction. So, meaning ang kanyang reaction or ang kanyang experiment na nagawa it uh, it only have 81.39% of accuracy in its experiment okay so that is how theoretical percent yield and actual yield computed so ma'am si actual yield po lagi ay na, uh, nakikita sa given yes dahil si actual yield po ay actual amount na nakuha sa experiment so, kapag tayo ay more on computation lang, so, usually, pag hinahanap si percent yield, ibibigay lagi yun or given po lagi siya. Pero si theoretical yield, yun yung mostly na ikinocompute natin based sa grams or yung sa given na binibigay. So, from this, so, we have already done. So, for your practice problem, so, I have here a practice problem. So, we have here A and B. I have here the, your practice problem. So, paki-compute na lang and the answer will be given to the comment box. Okay, thank you.